Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Tort. There's a lot to cover because I, uh, this is actually my second time recording this episode. The first time, my recording got messed up. So I lost it all and now I've got to try to re-explain everything that happened. So it's going to be a bit of an info dump at the beginning of the episode, but it's okay because right after that we're going to get into some exciting stuff. For example, we're finally going to make some tools. And this time, not using the tool forge, I still can't make that. But uh, I'll, I'll explain all that in a minute. Okay, so I got the power system up and working. So I made the... I don't remember if I talked about this at the, in the last episode that you saw, but I made the basic energy cube from Mechanism. Yeah, I did talk about this. Yeah, so I made this. This converts from RF, from Immersive Engineering, and just automatically converts to the EU power system. So this just connects directly to the basic energy cube. Don't even need a wire between the two, just put the cube next to it. Then I've just got a tin wire connector going to a low voltage transformer, because it turns out that this thing outputs... Um, where's it say? It outputs 80 EU per tick, which is too high of a voltage to go into those machines over there, so I need to step it down. So this transformer steps it down. And then it goes into this bat box, which is... Well, it's just a battery from Industrial Craft. Gives me a little bit of a buffer. And then from there, goes across some poles and over to the machines. Speaking of which, I think I added some machines from when you last saw it. Um, metal former was there. Uh, electric furnace, I think that wasn't there last time. And also compressor. So I think I made the electric furnace and the compressor. Compressors needed to make um, a bunch of things, mostly dense plates. Dense bronze, dense copper, and, and so on. Just nine normal plates to make a dense version of it. And then that's used in lots of things, I think. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure those are important for something pretty soon. Because the compressor's a kind of a basic machine that's uh, pointed out that you should make it on the flowchart for how you're supposed to progress through this mod pack. So I'm sure it's very important pretty soon. And the electric furnace is just a nice way to not have to burn coal all the time. And it's also, just by default, a bit faster than a normal furnace, and if I put upgrades into it, it'd get even faster. Alright, that's the new stuff there. Um, oh, this furnace setup is a bit new, too. So, basically, I set it up so that instead of, uh, what was it, two, two basins and one casting table, now it's just three casting tables? I can switch it out if I need it, but basically I wanted to clear out this this uh, smeltery which was full of all sorts of things like lava and water and little bits and, and bobs of all sorts of random materials so I just cleared it all out and I basically made it so it's a machine that can just pump out tons of ingots of whatever I want I uh, I learned that there's a much easier way to make seared bricks so before I have to make it by making grout gravel and sand and clay and whatnot that makes grout and then you put that in a furnace and then that makes the seared bricks but I realize that once you have a furnace up and going you don't need to do that anymore you can actually just put pure cobblestone inside of this thing and then that will melt down into into seared brick and then you can just cast that into whatever form you want such as ingots or bricks in this case and then you get a bunch of bricks way easier way cheaper let's go sleep real quick I also just processed a bunch of my spare metals that have come out of the macerator, which is where all these ingots came from. Oh, I also made Electrum. Just accidentally, because I was just throwing every single thing from the macerator into this thing, just throwing all of it into it, I accidentally made a bunch of alloys. Some accidental bronze, which isn't really a bad thing, and also some accidental Electrum, which I didn't even know I could make in this thing. But uh, it's used for a bunch of the big multi-block structures from Immersive Engineering, which is going to be pretty important. I think I want to look into those pretty soon. Especially the Crusher, which will basically be a way, way, way better version of the Macerator. Um, let's see, what else? I think that's almost it. So the other big, freaking huge thing that I discovered is, remember how when I first made the, the Smeltery, I was making all these things and then I realized I couldn't make a... Uh, a tool station. This is the tier one tool builder, and I couldn't make it. So I thought that they just disabled it in the mod pack to make it harder, and that you had to go straight to the tier two, the tool forge, which is why I've been focusing so much on the tool forge. But in the uh, episode that got lost, 
I realize that the Tool Forge is actually even farther away than I thought. I managed to get everything in place for the Tool Forge. I even made the Night Slime. Um, it, I can't even explain how I got that. Sorry. It's not that big of a deal. Um, so Block of Aluminum Brass, right? I can already get that. I made the Night Slime. Dense Steel Plates I could now make using the Compressor. Tool Station we got. So the question is, do you go with Energetic Alloy or a Mana Steel? I was thinking Energetic, I'm pretty sure I can't make it. Mana Steel requires me to get into Batania, so I was looking at what I needed to get into Batania, and it looked like I needed to get into Embers and Rock Hounding to get into Batania. So I'm like, oh my god, this is like 20 steps away. I've got to get into all these other mods before I can even get into Batania, before I can even make the Tool Forge. Like, what is going on? And then I had an idea. I looked up a video on YouTube of someone else playing this mod pack, and I found that they just... They just had a tool station. It was just there. I skipped around, trying to find out, like, where did they make it, you know? Looking for exactly what recipe they used, and like... is this Was this an older version of this mod pack that they were playing, and they changed it? I couldn't find anything in the video, I think they just made it off camera. But what I did realize is that... Because I've noticed some recipe weirdness, I thought, maybe that recipe is just messed up. And it turns out, it is. So, the recipe for the tool station does not show up. You type in tool station, the only thing that pops up is crafting station, which is totally different. That's just a crafting table. But I looked up what the normal recipe for a tool station is online, and then I just tried to make it, and it worked. It's just a crafting uh, crafting table, or a crafting station, I forgot which one. Uh, maybe it could be either. Plus a blank pattern. That's it. And then you just craft the tool station. So it's in the game. It works fine. You can make it very easily. It just doesn't show up in the recipe list. Which is really frustrating. But either way, that's out of the way. So now we can actually make some freaking tools. Which you know what that means. It's about moving time. I've got some armor. Ow. Ow. Uh, I've got some armor, kind of. And once I have tools, I'm going to feel pretty comfortable about moving. Especially since I've already gotten surprisingly situated here. And the more situated I get here, the less likely I am gonna be to want to move, so I better move pretty soon before it gets too big and unwieldy to move. So let's make some tools. I've already made a little bit of tools, but don't worry, I'll take you through the whole process. Basically, you remember the platinum I found in the nether? And how uh, I realized that it was, it seemed like the only thing I could actually mine that would allow me to get cobalt? So uh, I wanted to br basically bring you in for me making the real long-term tools that I'm going to be using for quite a while instead of just an interim tool. So I just made an interim platinum pickaxe just so I would be able to get the cobalt from the nether because this is what I really want to make my tools out of. So let me show you how this process works and let's make all the basic tools. So at the very beginning... Oh, wait. There's one thing I didn't explain. These redstone clocks. These redstone clocks basically just output a redstone signal. When you turn them on, I put a lever on them so you can toggle them. And if you could give a redstone signal to a faucet, it'll basically be the same thing as right-clicking it. It'll activate it. So... If I want to just, like, mass make a bunch of ingots, I can, for example, let's say I want to turn all this copper into ingots. It melts super fast when it's in crushed form. There we go, we got a bunch of copper. So I can just throw it in, activate these, and it'll just pour out all the ingots super fast, automatically suck them out into this chest, and we'll have more copper. Okay. So it starts out with a stencil table. You have a bunch of blank patterns, and you choose what kind of a part you want. So if you want to know exactly what parts you need, for example, you can say, let's say I want to make a shovel. That shows you need a shovel head. You need a rod, and you need a binding. So you make those things. Make a... where is it? Like this. You take a pattern like this. I think I've... yeah, I've already got one in here, so I'll just delete this one. So you take a blank pattern like this that you've made into an actual pattern. You make it out of some crap material. Um, let's grab some cobblestone. So this is the part builder. You take a stencil, make it out of some crap material. I think there's a lot of things you can make it out of. Let's just make it out of stone. So you make a stone shovel head out of that. Um, this is basically how you can build parts 
out of things that don't need to be casted. So you don't need to uh, pour stone out, but you do need to pour, you know, copper and iron out and stuff. So like non-metal stuff is is likely to make non-metal stuff. So you just need the part, a crappy version of it. You plop it down on a casting table. Um, I need some gold. Uh, it's going to take a while to melt. You plop it down in a casting table. You pour the metal over it. And then the crappy stone part just burns up, and you're left with the cast. So now, this you can put in whatever one you want, and you can put whatever... You can pour whatever good metal you want to into it. And then once you've made all your parts, you assemble it in the tool station. So you say, I want this, and then you put the shovel head that you've crafted out of whatever material you want into there, and tool binding and all that stuff, and then you'll have your finished product. So let's actually do it. Let's make a pickaxe. Um... It's worth mentioning, too, that there is a lot of different materials. I mean, if you just look at Tinkers, well, these are all different sword blades. Like, this from here all the way down to, like, here. Like, these are all the different types of just sword blades you can make. You can make it out of, like, practically anything. So if you take a look at materials, um, this shows you the basic um, statistics of what each material does for each part. For an axe, the head is the most important part. Or I think for, yeah, for a shovel, axe, anything, pickaxe. The head's the most important part, and that's what determines your mining speed. So you can see for cobalt, for the head, it gives it a mining speed of 12. Now the only other basically high, uh, high tier metal that I was able to get using the platinum pickaxe was ardite. Ardite and cobalt. Cobalt gives you a mining speed of 12. Ardite gives you a mining speed of 3.5. So you can see Ardite's not a good material to use for mining speed, if mining speed is what you care about. But it does have higher durability. An Ardite head has 990 durability, Cobalt head has 780. So there's different trade-offs for each thing. What do you value? Durability, speed, attack, damage, things like that. Cobalt is a very fast material with a decent durability. So it's very good for something like a pickaxe. So I'm just going to make the whole thing out of cobalt so that it's super fast. You can see if you make the handle out of cobalt, it also gives you this lightweight thing, which uh, increases the overall speed of it. Same with the, uh, the binding is what we're going to use for the extra part. Also increases the overall mining speed, so I'm going to make the whole thing out of cobalt. So, let's see, binding, pickaxe head, and this. I should melt a bunch of cobalt right now, too. Plop all that in there. So, pickaxe, tool rod, binding. Oh man, that's going to take a while. There we go, we got two blocks worth of cobalt. So, I'm looking to make a, a suite of the basic tools. Um, aside from a sword, I'm not going to bother with a sword right now. So, I'm going to make a pickaxe, a shovel, and a axe. So, I'm going to need one... Cobalt pickaxe head. Uh, I'm going to need three tool rods because I'm going to make the three basic tools. And I'm also going to need three bindings. So I've made a pickaxe head. Let's make an axe head. And shovel head. And that should be all I need to make the three basic tools. How are we doing on cobalt? Yeah, not bad. Got plenty left over. So if we go to the tool station and say, I want to make a pickaxe. Head goes there. I guess let's put them all in. Uh, binding goes here. And there we go. We can make a cobalt pickaxe. Um, so Tinker's Tools... It's worth mentioning they have an XP and leveling system, and they also have a modifiers system. Let's see, where does it say the modifiers? Modifiers 3. Control is... Oh, control breaks down what each individual part does. Shift gives you the overall thing. Yeah, so you can see the overall durability is about 1,000. Mining speed 12. 
and it has three modifiers, and we start out with a level of clumsy and, and no XP, of course. So when you upgrade the level of your tool, which you upgrade it just by using it, you know, attacking with a sword or mining stuff with a pickaxe that levels it up, uh, when you level it up, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what leveling it up does. I, I think it increases your modifiers, or Endor just increases the stats or something. It makes it better. Obviously, that's what leveling up always does. Um, but yeah, we're not done with this tool as soon as we make it. You, The three modifiers, we can put all sorts of stuff on this thing to improve it. Let's make a shovel. And an axe. Okay. Goodbye. This crap. This crap. And this crap. We got real tools now. I'm betting that it's already going to be way, way faster even before I've upgraded them. Oh, right. Uh, they don't stack. I'm just going to shove these away. So let's see how fast these are. Let's see how fast I can get sand. Look at how fast that is. Let's see how fast I can get wood. Boing, 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 boing. Oh my god, that's so fast! Oh, stone. Where's, where's the nearest stone? I think there's a hole here, yes. Copper. Not amazingly fast, but definitely faster than anything I've used. Much faster. And these are just the tier, these are unupgraded tier one tools. So the tier two, two tools allow you to get things that basically do what these do, but bigger. For example, you can get a hammer, which is basically like a pickaxe, except it works in a three by three area. So instead of, you know, destroying one piece um, of stone or whatever at a time, you can destroy three by three, which you can imagine would be incredibly efficient for mining. Um, similarly, you can make a shovel called an excavator that also does a three by three. You can also made, uh, make a axe that cuts down the entire tree. So you just cut down the bottom part of it and the whole thing falls down. So the tier 2 tools will be very nice, but this is already freaking cool. So let's upgrade them a bit. Um, the most important thing to upgrade it with is probably redstone because that increases their speed. <clears throat> that would be super nice to do, but unfortunately I don't have that much redstone. Uh, do I really just have seven? Oh my god, I just ha I was I just have seven redstone. Wow. Okay, um Yeah, so there's a part in the book that tells you what the different things do. Modifiers. So you can see you can get haste with redstone, luck with lapis, and diamond does stuff and all sorts of different things. The one that I'm gonna do right now, let's do I don't know, I don't need lapis really. At the moment. Let's upgrade it with an emerald and lapis. I'm just going to upgrade my pickaxe because that's the most important one. Um, what do we take it into? I think the part builder is where we do this. I want to say. No, I don't think it is. Yeah, it's a tool station. Alright, so we pop our pickaxe in there. And if we put an emerald on it, it is going to massively increase our durability. So if you look at it. If you look at the stats change, the durability goes up by, I think, 50%. So way more durability, and our modifiers go down to 2 because we've used one up by applying the emerald. And it gains a trait, emerald. Increases durability depending on base stats. So yeah, it gives you a 50% increase in durability. And there we go. So that's pretty cool. And if you put a lapis on it, it gives you luck. Which is basically, I think it's the equivalent of the fortune um, enchantment. Which basically makes it so that you get more drops out of things that drop multiple things. Like for example, if you break a block of redstone, I don't know what the number of redstone you get out of it normally is. But let's say you normally get three bits of redstone when you block and when you break a block of redstone. Uh, if you have fortune on it, you might get like four bits of redstone instead. But I think you have to... 
get it above the threshold to actually get any sort of luck, I want to say. So I'm pretty sure putting 32 on is pointless. I would need to put a full 60 to get anything out of it, I think. So I'm not going to bother with that. Yeah, I'll just stick with that for now. And eventually when I get a bunch of redstone, I can make it super fast. So pretty cool, huh? That's why I've been wanting to make tools for so long. Like, these are so much better than the crap I was using that would break every 20 seconds and was super slow. Ah, I feel good about that. Okay, now it's time to move. So, I've been looking into things I can use to move all of these chests and stuff, because I don't want to make 50 million trips back and forth to wherever the heck I'm going to move to. And I have never used this before, but I believe I can use the cardboard box from Mechanism to box up things. Which requires sawdust or wood pulp. We can't make the sawdust, but I did find a way to make wood pulp. Wood pulp can be made in the carpenter. Just use some wood, and I guess a little bit of water, and some power, and we get wood pulp. So let's make the carpenter. It's not too hard. Requires a sturdy casing. I'm going to make three just because I'm tired of making these things. Please let me never have to make them again. And then it's some glass and some bronze and then a sturdy casing in the middle. And we have a carpenter. Stable glass? What's that used for? Nothing. I'm going to toss this stuff in the macerator. Um, I could power it with a clockwork engine. The problem is I can't hook this up to this system here, because this is all EU power, which won't work. I guess I could make a separate connection... here? Or, you know what? Maybe if I just put the carpenter here, maybe it'll just... Yeah, it just gets power. This energy cube is like magic. It just converts any power to any power. <laughs> okay. So, wood. Isn't that the recipe? I know it needs water, but... M maybe I have to put water in it before it recognizes to make it. Alright, this thing's filled up with water now. It's got the recipe. Now we just need to give it resources, so a bunch of oak wood, and it should... Yep, there it goes. Oh, it's super fast, too. Wow. Nice. Alright, let's um, make a bunch of boxes. What was it? Just uh, this pattern? Yeah. Oh, they don't stack. Alright, well, let's see how this works. I also want to know if they're um, like one-time use. Can you pick up any block? First test. <laughs> oh my god, you can. Block data, yes. Block acacia leaves. Place it down. Um. Hmm. Oh! So you sneak and right click and it unboxes it. That is so cool! And yeah, they're totally reusable. Sweet! Alright, now let's make sure this works with an inventory. I'm a little bit scared to test it on something. Just in case it, like, deletes everything, let's just put some oak saplings in this. And let's pick it up. Place it down. Oh yeah, still there. Okay, so, yeah, we can absolutely use these to just... We just put every single, like, break everything down, put it all inside of chests, pack them all up with boxes, and then we have our entire base with us. And we can go exploring and find a, a new place to settle down. Okay, well, um, this is going to take a while to pack everything up. Let me get to work. Alright, it's moving day. Took apart everything. Almost. I didn't bother with the reinforced stone because that would take forever. And uh, defense is easy enough to remake. I used my two golden lassos to grab two cows so I can start breeding them again. And I made sure to break open the gate so that all the other cows can escape. Don't want them to starve in there. Toasty. 
pretty sure that's everything. I even grabbed the nether portal, I grabbed the aroma uh, mining portal from downstairs. I didn't grab the quartz grindstone, because, I mean, who cares? I don't think I'll ever need that again. Or the drying racks. Yeah, um... Goodbye. I haven't been here for that long, but... Still feels kind of strange just to leave. But here we go. Let's just set off into the wild and find a place to live. So, where should I go? I'm not sure if I would want to live anywhere that I've already seen, so I want to go to some sort of unexplored area. Um, I haven't really been down here. I suppose it'd be the fastest to go by boat. Let's start exploring. Oh, this is a pretty dramatic forest. Don't know if I'd want to live there, though. It'd be kind of hard to build in. Whoa, what is this? I think these are extreme hills. It's <laughs> still loading in. Wow, those are tall. There's a part of the village up on that one. Hmm. They're kind of ugly, though. I kind of want to get to the top of one of those, though. Oop. Huh? I think that was a guardian attacking me. You see those icons on the map? Uh, oh, that thing? Yeah, it's following me. <laughs> they're, uh, they're like little, well, not little, they're large fish creatures that shoot lasers at you or something. This grass looks different. Actually, is that cobblestone? Oh, that's cobblestone. Is that colored? Crag rock. Huh. I really do want to get to the tops of one of these, but I don't have like a full stack of... Oh, I got some cobblestone. Alright, let's do it. Yeah, I don't think I want to live up here. Very flat. Very ugly. No thanks. Got a mountain peaks biome here. Don't know though, it looks like it'd be pretty hard to build in. It's very dense. And it's not that good to look at either. It's just kind of like random dirt, cobblestone, and stone. Tons of vegetation and trees and I don't know. I don't think I would want to build here. Owl? Hey! Oh my god. I want that so bad! Um... I'm sorry, cow. I hope you can live in mountains. Do cows like to live in mountains? Boop. It's a hostile mob? What? It's not hostile. Look at it. Ah. <sighs> Lag spike? Or crash? Mm. Just lag spike. Whew. Okay, you don't have to live on a mountain, cow. Hostile mob. Yeah, it just keeps going and going. What is that up there? That tree? I don't think I've seen it before. Witchwood. Sounds important. Aww. The owl flew up to the very, very tippy top of this mountain. It's so cute. I'm definitely going to get owls at some point. I want to make up the aviary of owls. Let's see what the view's like. Whew. Can't see much.
Mm. I definitely like this better than the last place, but I don't think I would want to live here. Alright, I think I've satisfied my need to climb. Here's a super dense forest. Not necessarily the trees are dense, but, but yeah, roofed. Roofed forest, as it says. Oh. Yeah, the problem is it's so dark in here, as you can see, mobs can spawn. It is beautiful, though. But it is a bit dark. Hmm. That zombie zombie from all the way over there. I love all the bird sounds, too. I'm gonna put this place up as a possibility. I don't like how dark it is, but I really like the mood of it. And I could theoretically light it up in some way. It feels very mysterious. Let's mark this as... Pretty cool roofed forest. How long can this name be? Now we know. You see how the world's generating in, uh, loading in really slowly? It's kind of hitching and stuff. I think it's kind of interesting to explain why that's happening. Oh god, there's the end of the world. <laughs> so it's not because it's really slow at loading data from the hard drive or something like that. Um, the reason is because how Minecraft works is that the world... Let me... Uh, let me sleep, actually. The world is, practically speaking, unlimited in size. You can basically go in any one direction forever. And instead of taking 50 million years at the very beginning of the game, when you first started up to generate the entire possible world, which would probably make for like a 2,000 gigabyte save file. Is it really not nighttime yet? Instead of that, um, how it works is when you basically go somewhere new, it actually generates the chunks right then and there. So that's why anytime you're exploring new areas, it tends to do this where it kind of loads in slowly. Well, I guess it really isn't nighttime yet. There's the sun. Yes, yeah, so that's why it's so slow. So it's once you establish yourself somewhere and you kind of explore the area, then re-exploring through it loads pretty fast. Might as well explore these astral sorcery areas while I see them. Let me through. Ugh. Oh, I need to go down more, don't I? Um, maybe not. Please don't drown. Oh! Whew. I think I need to go down a lot. Or maybe... Maybe this isn't one of those... things? Aren't these one of the things that has the holes in them that has chests? Oh my god, I just realized this shovel's like instant with dirt. Look at this. Let me get out of the water first. Wait, no it's not? Why was it instant before? Anyway, yeah, this isn't one of the usual places. Oh, check this out. So I, I was boating all the way here, and then the, then the river became frozen. It's really cool looking. And I love the sound of jumping on ice with this dynamic surroundings mod. Ooh. Oh, these are the ones that has the have the stuff under them, I think. Make a proper staircase. I think I've got like no inventory room. Actually, marble might be good. 
Emerald, definitely good. Constellation paper, good. Oh, I don't have any room. Don't need a cattail. I guess I don't need sticks. Oh, they didn't do anything? There's nothing here. I guess I don't need string either. Whew. Hello. Let's get a amount of iron. Yeah, this is beautiful. I don't think I would want to make my base in a snowy area, because I think snow might be kind of annoying to deal with. Plus, I think water might freeze, which might produce problems, I'm not sure. And I think the white would get monotonous, but to just visit a place like this is really pretty. Hello. I just boated across the ocean, took a long time, and that is an interesting structure. Yeah, I just came all the way from here. Just vanilla blocks. I don't know if this is a vanilla structure, though. It's all, like, broken apart. Looks like there's a downstairs. Let's get the torches out. Oh yeah, I saw one of these once, right? When I didn't have any torches. There's a cake! I'm sure that's totally not a trap of some sort. Monster spawner over that way. Yeah, I don't know what mod adds these. I don't know if they have anything super special in them or what. Mm. Okay, I'll tentatively explore. Let me make sure I have some sort of block here so I can cover up this place if it gets too hard. It's gotta look, we've got to look out for uh, traps, pressure plates, things like that. It goes even deeper. Ooh. Mm. There's a lot of spawners. Go for the cake. Door. Yeah. Whoa, cool. Hoppers. It's like whole hopper systems. Nothing in them, but the hoppers themselves, I think. What do they take? They usually take quite a bit of iron, and in this pack they okay, it's it's a vanilla recipe, but still. I'm going to take these. Ooh. Tempered blade. Highly durable. It's enchanted. It's got sharpness, unbreaking, mending. How does it compare? This is 6 attack damage. This is 7, so it does more damage. Durability 256. Durability 256. Yeah, I'd bleed this thing. Mm, don't need any of this. Cool. I'm gonna grab this too. This also take a lot of iron. Man, I wish I had more room in this golden backpack. I should have made another golden backpack, really. Is there any total garbage I can throw out of here? I guess I don't need these empty cardboard boxes. I obviously have enough boxes. Boop, boop, boop. No. Out, out, out. I'm scared. 
Just toggles that light. <laughs> This has got to be a trap, right? I mean... What do we got here? Some potions? Unstable. They don't really say what they do. Some enchanted books. This is just power one. That's not that special. Nothing I particularly want, really. Uh, I guess the fruit. Because I think my fruit nutrition is pretty... Yeah, 16%. My dairy is almost 0%, but I'm really good on those veggies. Alright, I'm out of here. Oh, look at the little bat. It was hanging upside down. Hi. I want to get like a, a bat aviary or whatever you call it, too. Alright, let's keep exploring. This mesa biome is pretty interesting looking. I like the red sand and how that looks, but uh, the block choice just seems kind of really weird looking. Like the stark difference between the red sand, the coarse dirt, and the grass blocks just looks weird. Seems kind of random. <gasps> Kitty cats. Do you see them on the map? Those can be pretty hard to find. A lot harder to find than cows. Can I capture them? The thing is, to tame them, you're supposed to use, I think, fish. I don't have any. Um, I do have the golden lassos, of course. But I don't know if I could catch them. Let's try. I think you gotta crouch to not scare them. Where are they though? There's so much underbrush. <gasps> There's one! Oh shit! Wrong, wrong key. Oh, there we go. I accidentally punched it, but I got it! I'm sorry about that. I took you down from 10 hit points to 9.388155 hit points. I'm sorry, kitty. All right, Callus, you're going to survive in the jungle now. I'm sure it'll be fine. They're versatile. Hello, little kitty. Got it! <laughs> I got two kitties! I can breed them now, oh my god. And they will turn into actual cats, by the way, not just ocelots. When you tame them, it... When you tame them, they turn into, like, house cats. That's so cool. Alright, back to exploring. What is that? What is that, and why is it in the middle of the sea? Compact Machine Wall from Compact Machines 2. What? Oh, I'm... shrunk? I'm tiny. Shrinking fluid? I'm intrigued. Huh. I don't... I've never used combat machines. I don't know how it works. I guess I should maybe get this stuff? Is it used for anything in particular? Is it hard to make? Multi-block miniaturization. Whoa. So it looks like you need buckets of miniaturization. Put on a bunch of blocks of iron and... Throw this into the fluid to start the crafting. Huh. And that's to make the machine wall? I'm intrigued. But I think I'm just gonna mark this. Hmm. 
Here's one on land. What I will do is grab a bucket of that fluid. <laughs> like, I want to make the kitty cats tiny or something. There's gotta be all sorts of stuff I can do with this. Alright, well, I've been traveling for an extremely long time. Hello, Guardian. Please go away. And I haven't found anything more interesting than the roofed forest, which I was pretty happy about already, aside from the darkness. So, I think what I'm going to do is go back there. Um, and I think I'm going to teleport there. Which is technically cheating. But all it's going to do is save me a hell of a lot of time. It's not like it would be hard to get back there. It would just take a long time. Because look at how far I've come. This is where I am now. Came from all the way here. I went through this little channel here. Around, around, around. I went through this ice channel here. And here. It would take an obscenely long time to get back there. Huh? Are there elephants? <laughs> I don't think so. I think that was an elephant sound being played by dynamic surroundings because we're in a savanna. Which is extraordinarily misleading. Hmm. Let's turn that off, shall we? There it is. Elephant. Block. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna cheat a little bit just to get back there. So this mod that gives you this map and all this stuff, if you have cheats enabled, which I do, for extraordinary circumstances, kind of like this one, um, it allows you to teleport to any waypoints. Uh, here. So I made a roofed teleport. I could teleport to the original um, pretty cool roofed forest place that I made, but I think I made that on land. And teleporting on land can be a little bit tricky because sometimes you teleport into the ground and then you suffocate. So I like to make my teleports out in the water, which is what this one is. And here we go. Our new home. We'll start to set up. Step number one, I think, is going to be securing the location. There's a lot of enemies around. It's quite dark. I don't know why that just disappeared, but I'll take it. <laughs> so let's run around and just spam a bunch of torches. It'll look ugly. I'll fix it up and make it look better later. But for now, I can't have a bunch of enemies spawning around here. Okay, got a decent amount of torches down. Let's stick out the enemies already here. Very low on health, wow. Okay. I think we're good. Might be some decent armor here. Ooh, my pants are not doing too good. Oh, wait, that's right. Those are the pants I looted that were already almost broken. That's fine. I don't need lily pads. I don't need that. How are these looking? Oh, they're the same as my current pants, but pretty, uh, better condition. My chest plate broke too. I think I saw a golden chest plate drop by one of the zombies somewhere. Where? Oh. No, it's pants. There's a zombie head. Bloop. Was it golden pants the whole time? Or is there a golden chest plate somewhere? Oh. Ooh. Uh. Uh. Ha, ha, ha. 
I've seen that thing once before in somebody's playthrough, and I'm pretty sure it does a lot of damage. I will check. Okay, yeah, that one hit did do a lot of damage, but it is pretty easy to kill, thankfully. What's that? Core stone? Doesn't seem to be used for anything of significance. No way to make it either. Hm. Maybe it's just for looks? It's pretty cool looking. Actually, I don't have much inventory space, I'm just gonna leave that. Ah, I just saw a creeper spawn over here on the map. And there's a creeper up there. Oh, I really need to expand my safe area, but for now this is gonna have to do. So I'm gonna plop down all my boxes. Well, we've got a start here to a base. I just spam down all of the boxes and just open them up. They're obviously not sorted or anything like that. The area is sort of safe. So let me show you some of the things probably the primary ways I'm gonna make our base hopefully look good so I'm actually gonna put effort into making the base look good now that we're actually gonna stay here for a long time so here's the things I'm gonna use I'm gonna use chisel and chisel and bits I don't have a crafting table creeper so I'm gonna make something simple here using these tools so we want a stone actually Eh, stone chisel's fine. Or iron chisel, I mean. So we'll make that chisel, and then we'll also make another chisel. Um, that's right, you make a chisel from chisel and bits, and you also make a chisel from chisel. I know, it's confusing. <laughs> so chisel and chisel and bits are going to be the main ways that make stuff look good. They're very powerful. There is also another mod that is big on aesthetics called Architecture Craft. I've never played with that mod before, but I will be getting into that at some point. But for now, let's stick with this. Let me make sure I know which one's which. Yes, okay. So, the chisel from just the chisel mod allows you to turn practically any block into a bunch of different variants of it. Just texture variants. So this is just basic oak wood planks, and you can turn it into all these other different textures. Let's go with, um, I don't know, something kind of interesting. Maybe these? Disarray, horizontal, vertical? Sure. So it just converts them into something that looks more interesting. Oh yeah, and it turns out I there was a golden chest plate. I just already picked it up. Or glowstone chest plate, rather. Boop. So now I have something of just a typical old block that looks different. Very good for adding variety to whatever you want to make. You! They're so close. I need to make many more torches. So before I show you the iron chisel, let me just make like a little platform out of this. I want to make, I basically want to make like a little raised structure off of the ground for my bed. Sort of going with the idea that you, I don't know what it's called, but you often see structures in jungles and stuff like that where the floor is raised off of the ground to prevent bugs and, and things like that from getting to you. So let's make something like that. Let's make it like that. Let's put the bed down in the center. Okay, so it looks terrible, right? Now let's use chisel and bits. Wasn't it alt? Oh, R. Okay. So here's what we can do with chisel and bits. Chisel and bits allows you to do all sorts of things by basically messing with blocks at a smaller scale than you normally can. Normally you can only, you know, delete a whole block, place a whole block, but with this mod, you can do it all the way down to, boop, a single little bit. 
How many is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's probably 16. So 16 by 16. There's also an undo. Oop, there we go. Now, I'm probably not going to do stuff generally in that extreme of a detail, but we can set this to, for example, grid snapped one fourth size. And let's carve out something cool. So let's make it so that there's like posts. And there we go. Now we have a neat little raised platform. Something that you couldn't normally make. Normally you'd only be able to deal in blocks of this this size. Pretty cool, huh? It's going to be pretty powerful. It's going to allow me to do a lot of cool things. Let's sleep. Ah, no bugs. No bugs at all. Except all the mosquitoes eating my face. Alright, um, I guess I'm just going to start laying down stuff. Just start setting things up. I'm trying to figure out where to put the machines and whatnot, and start building some things. So I'm thinking we're going to have a little bit of a footpath here that goes over to a garden. So one of the things you can do, by the way, is if you have a grass block and you have something like a shovel, if you right-click on it, it turns it into a path. Just looks kind of cool. Uh, unfortunately, you can't turn dirt into a path. It has to be grass, so i got to wait for the grass to spread to this dirt before I can turn this into it. And this puzzle stuff cannot be turned into path, unfortunately. But eventually this whole thing will be path. Leads over here. And then I think this whole nice flat part next to the water is going to be farmland. I also realized something. Um, let's see if it says here. Momentum. There it is. Yeah, so the cobalt shovel head, the momentum effect. Um, I can't look at the description here, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's the thing that makes it so you dig faster and faster. Um, if you keep digging for a long time without interrupting the dig, it'll dig faster and faster. And I think that's what happened before, where I started to dig dirt like instantly, because it just happened while I was doing this sand. Check this out. Starts normal speed. And then... Boom! I'm sorry, I just said boom. It's like friggin' instant! It's amazing! And I think my axe will even do the same thing. Right? Doesn't this have... Yeah, that's got momentum! Oh, so if I'm digging just a long tunnel... That would be so nice. It's hard to tell if the sun's almost down or if it's just the trees, but I think it is almost bedtime. Alright, I've got a nice thing laid out of a bunch of dirt. And I just gathered a bunch of worms, because I forgot to gather the worms from my old farm. I'm not sure if you actually can gather them back up, but I forgot to try. So I got a bunch of new ones, that way I won't have to put down water around here. One thing I want to test and just be absolutely sure about is what is the range on these, because that's important. 3x3? Three three? Okay, definitely 3x3. Three three. And let's see if you can pick them up. Um, maybe like... Sneak click? No. What if I break the block? Oh, it just disappears. Okay, yeah, so you can't pick them up. Fair enough. In that case, I don't have enough worms, but that's alright. So it goes one in either direction. Eh, I'll just put them down haphazardly, whatever. It's fine. God, look at them go to work. Such industrious little wormies. Is there a better way to get them? Like, other than tilling? Mm, doesn't look like it. Okay, well, I'm going to go get some more. Look at my little army work in those fields. Beautiful. Let's get planting. There we go. Got a nice little garden. I planted most of the old things. Um, plus a bunch of things that I found just from tilling and breaking grass and stuff. There's like a million different seeds from Pam's Harvest Craft. I mean, look at all these different types of crops. 
if you just break grass and just kind of break vegetation, you just tend to get a bunch of them. So we got a bunch of little stuff that I haven't seen before. Um, garlic, cotton, leek, rhubarb, radish, zucchini. Yeah, a bunch of really cool stuff, and that's just scratching the surface. Alright, we got a nice food source ready to go. One big, big thing, though, I do want from food that I don't have yet is I don't have a soybean. Uh, soy seed. I think I got, like, one soy seed at one point from a quest reward, but I lost that a long time ago. And the reason I really want that is because you can press that into tofu. I mean, not the seed itself, but you can press soy into tofu, which gives you protein, so that'll be my vegetarian way of getting protein. Plus, you can make soy milk. I want to say that gives you dairy? Yeah. So, that'd be a great way of getting dairy. I'm not trying to go vegan, so I could totally drink cow's milk, but... but... Soy milk is really, really easy to make. I think it's kind of just a byproduct. I think you get soy milk and tofu at the same time, so that'll give me protein and dairy. Ow. I keep getting enemies attacking me, so I'm gonna go ahead and put up some more torches. And I think you can chisel torches... No? Huh. I'm certain I've seen people do that, but that was in an older version of Minecraft. Maybe the newer version of Chisel doesn't have that, maybe that was an add-on mod or something. Dang. Well that sucks, I was hoping to go for some more atmospheric torches. But that's alright. Oh, check this out. So around the world you find these like shaded gardens and stuff from Pam's Harvest Craft, and I think these are the things that give you just like a burst of seeds. Yeah, look at that. I'm sure to find some soybeans, or at least a bunch of new stuff. Can't even carry them all. Alright, what do we got? Zucchini, radish, garlic, spice leaf. Interesting. Mushroom. Beans. I've gotten beans from a different mod, but this is from Pam's Harvest Craft. Tomato. Cotton. Barley. Oh. Oh yeah, there's two types of cotton, too. Cotton from Natura and cotton from Pamps Harvest Craft. Hmm. No soybeans, but we got a bunch of good stuff. That looks like a radish. Oh no, that's... No, that's not radish. That's, uh... Uh... The super sour thing? What's it called? Rhubarb. Alright, well, let's go plant these. Alright, well, I was hoping to set up my entire base before ending the episode, but I think I should just end it here, because I have spent a lot of time off-camera exploring to find the location and stuff like that and setting things up for the base. So I think I'll end it here. I hope you've enjoyed so far and when I return I'm gonna set up the rest of my base, make it look pretty nice, and then probably start on some new stuff.